So we can offer these technologies to cure cancer cells right within our local community. So for instance, within Broward County, there's no cyber knife program. We're bringing cutting edge linear accelerators to the community. And the most discriminatory part of our Helix vision from a technology standpoint is what's called proton beam technology. And this is what I worked with up in uh, Boston in Massachusetts General Hospital. To give you a sense of the uniqueness of this technology, in, in 2005, in the entire continent of North America, there were really two centers in, in the continent that were treating patients that had cancer with proton beam technology, that had any clinical volume. There's some research sites, but if you talk about actual sites that are treating patients with high volume, there's one in Mass General and then one in California. That was just two years ago. Uh, 2005. So the demand for this technology uh, is so high, but the supply is so small. And the rate limiting factor is really the cost of the technology and having the clinical team, the clinical teams that have the ability to implement this technology. So what we're doing is we're bringing proton technology down to South Florida will be the first healthcare system that offers protons uh, to patients in South Florida. And very briefly, I'm visual, so usually I use a lot of slides and I think that gets things across pretty clearly, but let's say you were lying down on a table on your stomach and there's a radiation beam coming from the ceiling and treating your spinal cord, which is protected by your backbone goes through your vertebral bodies the, uh, on your backside. So we do this for certain types of radiation. A normal radiation beam will come, start at the source, the linear accelerator, and come down, s travel through air, and hit the back of somebody's body that's lying down on a table. And it will continue to penetrate all the way through the body. So radiation dose will be going to normal organs, basically to sites that we don't need the radiation going to. There's no way to avoid that. We can minimize it, we can modulate it, we can temper it, but we can't eliminate it. A proton beam comes and as soon as it enters the body, we tell that proton beam where to stop. So we say, stop after three inches or a few centimeters. And then if you measure the dose after that point in the body, the dose is essentially zero. So from a physics perspective and a technology perspective, it's amazing, it's well proven, it's established, and uh, it confers a real benefit to patients. In addition to that, uh, the Helix Oncology team is uh, doing uh, a lot of things that follow an academic model in the sense that working closely with other physician groups, a multidisciplinary approach, conferences, clinical trials, we talked about some of the other technologies that, are, uh, that, that, that could potentially tie in. So uh, that's why I think that uh, this conference is very exciting. And uh, I think that what we're able to do here at Broward Health will uh, be very discriminatory for our patients uh, locally. And we've also identified 11 other sites around the country uh, and we're working with those uh, healthcare systems to implement our Helix Oncology model in a similar fashion. So I could talk about this for hours, but in the interest of brevity, uh, I wanted to give you a brief overview and I'm very happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Hey, we'll open it up for questions and specifically Dr. Agarwal, and we can go back to, through the panel. There's a gentleman over here with a question. Specifically, I wanted to ask in reference to the proton therapy, because my understanding is there are actually two technologies. One is developed out of um, Fermilabs, and the other is out of Russia. And the um, difference between them is pretty significant regarding the cost to establish them. Um, the one is a, the established at about 60 million, and the other is at about 120 million. And they also have different footprints, so I was just curious to find out where the technology for your company is, is sourced and 
and what you estimate to be the cost to establish the, the, the facilities using your proton therapy? Sure, excellent question. Uh, historically, there's uh, proton technology that's being used in physics for research purposes, as you mentioned at Fermilab. They're not actually treating patients, so that's not a clinical, that's not a direct clinical application. If you have a cancer today, here and now, you can't walk in the door at Fermilab and get treated. They offer a lot of uh, important R&D on the physics side of things, absolutely. So as far as clinical application, there are really only two sites. Uh, well, there are more now that are coming online, but over the last few decades, there have really only been two sites. And one of the issues which you touched on is the cost. So the cost of these technologies, and I can speak in a clinical setting, in a clinical setting, the cost of these technologies has hovered anywhere around the $200 million price range. So for instance, at, at Mass General in Boston, that's, we're looking at more than that for the facility that was built there. Now, understand that incorporates a lot of time and resources to research and development. So what we're bringing to Broward Health is not to mimic the Mass General model where we have hundreds of millions of dollars in resources available to us for research and development. What we've done is we'd like to just take that technology that's there and bring it so you can actually treat patients here in the community setting. So historically, there have been a few vendors to respond specifically to your question that uh, have the ability to develop uh, and to build proton uh, units around the, around the world, uh, in Europe, Japan, and uh, North America. So the technology vendor that uh, we're working with, you're absolutely right, what, we've been able to, uh, what, what has been able to be, have been done now is to reduce the size of these proton units, the footprint, as you very accurately described it, to a much smaller level. So you don't need a facility the size that's currently exists at Mass General. It can be in a much, much smaller footprint. You no longer need a football field like the concept we have at Fermilab. And uh, we've been able to bring the price of that technology down very significantly as well. These that begs the question, funding? What's your funding sources? Sure. Uh, we have uh, a private equity team that is part of Helix Oncology, uh, AMD Equities. And uh, we have funding in place for our multiple proton projects uh, and radiation oncology projects. Uh, around the country, as I, uh, I think I mentioned, we have 11 sites that we've identified uh, around the nation that we think would be prime targets for uh, implementing this model like we're implementing at Broward Health. So uh, our uh, Series A is being handled by uh, AMD Equities. If you were interested in uh, more s specific information regarding that, I'd be happy to share that with you offline. Any other questions for Dr. Agarwal? Oh, there we go. Sorry. Yeah, Dr. Agarwal, uh, thank you for your efforts. Uh, Broward Health has come a long way in a short period of time down here. What are some of the barriers that uh, are facing you uh, in the geopolitical economic landscape of South Florida uh, that, that you're overcoming right now to try to get this type of transformation underway? The, there, are, there are always a number of challenges with uh, whenever I think that there are significant changes being made in any industry or in healthcare. And we do believe that when all is said and done, uh, especially let's, start, let's talk specifically about the South Florida market, that this model will fundamentally change the oncological landscape uh, with respect to cancer care and radiation oncology care in the community. So there are multiple challenges. The